Oh, hey guys. Uh, sorry, I didn't see you there. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Professor Sabrina Isaac Berry. I am not a rock star, but today we will be looking at calculus lecture number 35, the intermediate value theorem. Now, by clicking on this video, you are obligated to learn with me, and I am obligated to teach you normies out there. <laughs> yeah, this intro has gone in a lot more condescending since the beginning of this series. All right. So, now, let us honor Sir Isaac Newton for creating the beautiful subject of calculus. Alright, now get the hell out. Next. By the way, next doesn't mean Simon Stephens, who invented the intermediate value theorem. Nobody cares about Belgium anymore. I mean, it used to be useful in the old days for science, but now, really just a tourist attraction. What is the intermediate value theorem? To give you normies out there a quick reminder what it is, unless you're not a normie and you're actually a mathematician just watching this and laughing at me. But let's say that we have a graph. Oh yeah, I forgot. We have to watermark this. Hey there. You have become a watermark. There we go. Watermark completed. All right, so what is a graph? Let's just move this over here. Wait, did I just say what is a graph? <laughs> Sorry, folks. So let's say we have a point. I have a point, but you probably don't. So let's say we have a point A over here and another point B over here, there. Over here, over there, it's over everywhere. And now, let's say we take our golden function. That's why it's colored gold. And now, let's say it looks like this. Hmm. Good, right? I'd say so. All right, so this is the thing because now we see that I think that, okay. here is f of b and now the law tells that if there is somewhere wait if there is somewhere in these two numbers f of a and f of b there is a number n then there must be a number c between these two and that means that f of c must be n. That must be true. So let's test this out. We slice right through the number. Slice. And see, it's right in the middle. Theory proved. So that is our c. And so that is how the theorem works. So let's put this is a tiny little reminder in the corner. And we solve our problem. So what is our problem today? Well, our problem here is this. We have this function, 2x cubed plus 3x squared, and then I think that was minus 5, yeah. And what we have to do over here is we have, okay, we have to, and prove that there's only one root. Sorry, I'm going insane. We have to prove that there's only one root with the intermediate value theorem. So, um, I actually have no idea how this function is going to look like. I mean, how are you supposed to? But let's just plug in some crap to get some ideas. So, we plug it in. 2 minus 2 cubed, so that's minus 8. And then, plus, well, 12 minus 5. Let's just do this. So minus 9. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put that on a graph. On a graph. Because doing this a bit quicker because I have somebody to teach down there. So, um, let's just draw the negative axes. Sorry, minus 9. Hmm. So let's say 
that it's minus 2 minus 9 will go down here. Minus 2 minus 9. And then this is 0, 0. Well, how are we even supposed to know that it hits 0, 0? Mm -hmm. Well, let's now plug in 1, positive 1 and negative 1. So if we plug in negative 1, that's just going to give us 2 minus 1 minus 2. And then that's just going to give us plus 3 minus 5 equals minus 4. And now, so minus 1 minus 4. And now the thing is, what is the thing? Well, f of 1 is just the sum of the coefficients. So that's just going to be 2 plus 3 minus 5. So that means it's going to be 1, 0. And now let's plug in 2 and see where that gets us. Hmm. Well, if we plug in 2, then we don't get the flu. But rather, we get 2 times 8 is equal to 16 plus 12 minus 5 equals to 23. I'll save you all the hard work in math. So 23 is going to be way up in the sky, cloud 9, 223. And I guess it would look something like this. I don't know. This is just from the memory of graphs I have like stored in my brain. Mm, I think it looks something like this because this is what I remember being x cubed. And since there's that. All right. So now what can we do with this function? Well. As you can see, it's just going in a downward track. There's no number between here that can even correspond upward. So, as you can see, since it's just going down from minus 1 to minus infinity, nothing comes up on the surface. So, we can prove there's not two roots, but just one. Lonely one. Alright, thank you everybody for watching. And now, we're going to go to Wolfram Alpha! Wait, don't we already have the decimal set? Whatever, who cares? Alright, so, uh, what do we have here? So, 2x, um, wait, how did you lose this damn thing? I have no idea, I have no clue what's happening. 2x cubed plus 3x squared, I think it was, minus 5. And as you can see, it has no root. It may go up for a little time here, but not enough to reach the surface. Thank you everybody for watching, and we will see you next time.